can't be contained. Of all the columnists, the we know Richard Zoglin the least. In the newsroom poll, everybody, almost, rated him average. Three said he is great. Richard is a little different from the others. He doesn't hang out in bars. He doesn't show up at all the free drink functions. He is quiet. I'm told he has a subtle sense of humor, but I haven't seen it on display. Dick Williams called him the pure critic. Zoglin bristled a little at that. I hold to what I consider the highest standards of criticism uh, and art. I look at TV as at least a potential art form. And even though it fails about 98% of the time, I'd say I still think you have to apply those same critical standards that you apply to movies and theater and everything else that you go to for enjoyment. Richard Zoglin's idea of a good time is a glass of wine, a good book, and some soft music. I have a hard time seeing him sitting in front of a TV set watching Love Boat or BJ and the Bear or Here's Boomer. It doesn't fit his image. He's also been described as the most cerebral columnist who has a New York Times style. If it turns off some readers to me, I'm sorry. I'm trying to, although I'm not trying to be above my, my readers at all, I really am trying to communicate with them. I'm just trying to hold to what I consider are high standards of reporting and criticism. And, uh, and in a sense, I'm trying to educate people. Of all the people I talked to in this series, Richard Zoglin is the only one that other columnists made it a point to tell me about. One newspaper writer called and said, Richard Zoglin is a very sensitive person who spends 12 hours a day sometimes just searching for the precise words to describe an emotion or to find a phrase that will make it clear to readers something that he thinks is very important. Another columnist said he spends a lot of time turning out not very much. Somehow, I get the feeling Richard Zoglin has a lot to say, but he hasn't said it yet.